Hello everybody, this is Professor Jones, and this is the first of your uh, review sessions for At Home. Um, if you're watching this video, then you've already come to the first day of class, good for you, and you are registered for my Theater 105 uh, Intro to Makeup Design class. Now, some just to let you know, that I will be releasing a video, uh, one for each class that we have. As you know, we don't have class all the time, but when we do have class, I always like to make one of these videos so that you guys can review and get prepared for the next class. So, um, what I'm going to go through today is what we went through in class, but it's going to be the areas of the face just as a refresher so that when I'm giving you instructions or when you're using an instruction sheet, you'll be able to read <laughs> what I've said and understand it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through your makeup kits. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go through um, the extra supplies that you will need to provide yourself um, that are not found in the makeup kit. Okay? Wonderful. So, for starters, we're going to... Oh, and by the way... I was being a good student, and I have my paper and my writing utensil, which we always bring to class with us, don't we? That's what we thought. So, to get started. Areas of the face. Areas of the face, a lot of these you'll know. Um, some of these will be slightly new terms for you, and some of them will just be clarifications. Um, it's very important that we know about the areas of the face when we're talking about basic makeup, because um, our face is our face, and the only thing that makeup is doing is accentuating or de-accentuating parts of our face to give a desired effect. Next time we meet, we'll be doing a basic corrective makeup, and a basic corrective makeup will just take all of your features that you have on your face and just make them pop. In future makeups, we will be um, making your face rounder, or making your face narrower, or maybe adding a scar or something like that. So in those instances, you'll want to de-accentuate and accentuate some parts of your face. Okay? Alright. So, starting from top and moving down, here are the parts of your face as per Mr. Jones's class. To begin with, we have the forehead, and that's one that you guys should all know, but it goes roughly right there. Easy enough? See, this won't be hard. Then right here, we have the bridge of the nose. We have our eye sockets. We have our eyelashes. We have our eyebrows. Okay. We have our nasal labial folds. Nasal labial folds are these guys right here. If you kind of scrunch up your face, it's this right here. They're more pronounced on older individuals. So when we do our old age makeup, you'll want to know where these nasal labial folds are. Okay? Good. You have your cupid's bow. Your cupid's bow is this little, it's kind of hard to see, again, the older you get, the more pronounced it is, but it's essentially the dip in your upper lip. It goes at the middle of your lip, up to your nose. Cupid's bow, okay? We have our chin, we have our neck, we have our cheeks, those all you should know, went through them fast. We have our cheekbones, okay? Your cheekbones. To find your cheekbones, the best way to do it is to touch your cheeks, oh, and you feel that they're squishy, right? And you're going to work your way up until it's not so squishy. It's a bone. So you'll need to know that. Hard, huh? You guys are all going to ace my class. Alright, uh, you have your lips. Those are fairly easy, too. And, um... Oh, the apples of your cheek. So the apple of your cheek is the part of your cheek that's furthest forward. And another uh, really easy way to find it is to smile. Smile really big and fake for me. Yeah, smile. It'll be this right here. 
this is the apple of your cheek. Okay? So those are some of the basic um, parts of your face. And if we, if I need to introduce you to further parts of the face um, for later lessons, I'll do it during that lesson. If you have any questions, of course, you can always email me, um, and I will get you taken care of. So the next thing that we're going to do, according to my introductory list, is we are going to go through your makeup kits. Yay! So, your makeup kits look a little something like this. There, you can see that, right? Pretty fun stuff. Um, it comes in this little box with different compartments, and it is a basic um, actor's guide to makeup, essentially. It's going to have all of the basic ingredients for you to do a lot of different roles, um, but it won't have, for example, for example, one of the first things that I'm going to show you in the kit oh. is foundation. Foundation is used as a base coat for your face. So think of it as priming a wall before you paint it. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to hide any blemishes that you might have. You can see that I have a couple of them. Men, men who are out there, right? Men, whoa, you're actors too. Um, when you shave, sometimes you get little bumps, little razor bumps. It's going to cover that up for you so people don't see that on stage. It's a wonderful thing. Your basic makeup kit is going to come with three different types. Um, based on your skin type. If you're a light skin type, you have one type of kit, and if you have a dark skin type, you have a different kind of kit. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't think that this semester we had anybody with a darker skin type, because we're, you know, up north, don't have as much um, melanin in our, in our skins, but um, you still have three different shade options that are given to you. So, the first of these shade options is olive tan, Ooh, you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty reading that, aren't you? Because it's so bright. I'll shield you from the light of my camera. Forgive me, makeup teacher, not technically savvy. Well, you might not be able to read them. Oh, poo. Well, I'll remember that for next time. But you will be able to see them. So, as you can see, there's the brand name of the company that we buy our makeup kits from, Ben Nye, B-E-N-N-Y-E, -E. and this um, is for a slightly darker skin tone. The next type of foundation that we have is Natural Fair. I showed you this in class. This is the one that I use. Um, and the last type is Creamy Peach. It's for a little bit rosier of a complexion. Now, I suggest always, 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 before you put any makeup on your face, that you open your makeup. And you take a little with your finger, and you put it on your skin, on the back of your hand. And then you wait five minutes. And you guys should do this at home so that you're ready to go when we get to class. But what that will do is that will make sure um, because Ben Nye makeup, because theater makeup in general, and Ben Nye is just one supplier of theater makeup, um, is so much thicker, it's so much heavier, um, you're a lot more likely to have an allergic reaction to it. And if you do have an allergic reaction to it, much better in a very small spot on the back of your hand than all over your face, right? Right. So make sure that you do that in your spare time. But also, after you've done that with your foundation, uh, try just a little bit right here, maybe a little bit right there, maybe a little bit right here, and figure out which of the three is closest to your skin color. And that's the one that we'll be using, okay? Foundation. So up next in our little kit is our best friends. We have cream highlight. Ooh, so bright. I'm sorry, students cream highlight. As you can see, it's a cream color. It's not white. Um, and that is important because skin is not white. Ever. 
that I know of, like pure white. There is a pure white that comes in your kit that looks a little bit more like that. And that's that's pure white, and we will use this um, on our skin, but only to really make something pop. So your regular highlight color is again this cream, this Ben Nye cream. As you can see, I've been using mine. The other thing that comes in that basic little kit is shadow. And we use highlights, the cream highlight we use on parts of the face that are more forward. Um, that we want to pop, and we use shadow on parts of the face that are further back that we want to hide a little bit, and that gives your face more definition. Okay, we'll talk about that during our basic makeup video. The next thing that you're going to find in your kit is a couple of triangle brushes. I've been using mine, but yours will come plastic wrapped and totally sanitary, so you won't never share. Oh, I should have said that at the very beginning. Never ever share your makeup. We went over this in class. Never ever share your makeup, ever. Because you don't want, if you don't want to have an allergic reaction to your makeup, you definitely don't want to have an allergic reaction to someone else. It's no good. So you'll have these, which you'll use to put on your foundation. The next thing that you'll have is you'll have two color wheels. The first color wheel looks a little bit like this, and in it, it has a natural lip color, which is this one. It has black, which is next to it, cinnamon, which is down from it, and dark lip color, okay? These are important. Um, we use them mainly on our lips, um, but sometimes we use them to make rosy cheeks, Sometimes we use them for um, new, fresh scrapes or bruises. Um, and the black we use um, around the eyes sometimes. So that's very important. The next color wheel looks a little bit something like this. Oh, that glare. And it's our bruise wheel. So um, the individual colors don't have names. But in there we have um, yellow, and we have a uh, red color, and we also have a brown color, and we have a purple color, and we use all of these, um, we blend them together um, in addition with our other color wheel to bruise up our face when we need to bruise up our face. So the next thing that we have in our makeup kits are some lovely brushes. And these brushes, if you can kind of hear, they're very soft and we use these to paint our lips. We use them to paint our eyes. We use them to apply shadow and highlight. They're kind of our one-stop shop. And they're nicer brushes so that we can wash them in between each use. Um, and also in between each item that we're using. So for example, if we put on some shadow and then we put on some highlight, we can wash in between and the brushes, uh, they're good enough quality that it won't ruin the brush. The next thing that we have is a lovely eyebrow brush. You can use this to essentially brush your eyebrows. This side, oh, this side, right here, the more bristly side, that is used to clean off excess powder. And this side, right here, is used um, to comb the eyebrows. Okay, so there's that. The next thing that we have are two eye pencil, oh I'm sorry, we have one eye pencil in black um, and it is used obviously for our eyes. We use it on our um, waterline sometimes, sometimes just below the waterline. The waterline, to define that for you guys, is the line just 
in between your eyelash and your eye. Okay? So there's brown. There's a black color for that. Some people like to use brown. Um, for theater purposes, we use black because it really pops. We want it to pop, especially under stage lights. The next thing that we have is this brandy colored um, lip liner. Uh, we don't always use this. Girls use this more often than boys. It's in all the kits. Um, but boys, you will use this sometimes. If you're playing the young ingenue lover, you will line your lips so that they're very pouty and out there. Okay? The next thing that we have in our kits is a powder rouge. And powder rouge, for those of you who don't know, is used on the cheeks. And we also use it in theater. We use it on our chin, on our nose, and on our forehead. We just use it a little bit less. But it's to bring back some color to your skin after you've put your foundation on. It's one of the last things we put on, and we put it on using one of my favorite kinds of brushes. It's very soft. You can see it has a little bit of that color left on it. That's the kind of color that we'll be putting on our skin. And it's just very, oh, it's so soft. It's so soft, it's lovely. The next thing that we have in our kit is a pencil sharpener. Don't use this to sharpen your regular pencils. This is only used to sharpen your eye pencil. You don't want to be mixing graphite and eye pencil together because that might hurt your eye. The next thing that we have in our kit is we have liquid latex. Liquid latex is another one of those that you should be doing this with all of your makeup, but liquid latex especially because so many people are allergic to latex these days. What I really want you guys to do, even right now while you're watching the video, is you open it up. Mine's kind of dirty on the sides. If you get any on the sides, it'll dry and then it is latex. But I want you to take a little bit and I want you to spread it on your hand like I showed you, the back of your hand, just a little square, and see if you have an allergic reaction to it. Because the last thing that we want is for you to have an allergic reaction on your face. Okay? Next thing that we have is some nose and scar wax. It comes in a little tube like this. And we can use this. Um, it's really fun stuff. If you can see it, kind of, it's very dense. It's like clay. It's wax. But you can take some out and ball it up and stick it on your nose and cut it. And then color it a little bit and it looks like you've uh, cut your nose open. <sighs> Yikes. Sometimes fun for stage. The next thing that we have is our spirit gum. Spirit gum is really, 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 really sticky. So you take the spirit gum and you spread it, like for example, uh, you could put it on your nose if you were doing something with your nose, but one of the places that I use it the most often is I spread it right here before I stick on a mustache. Spirit gum. With spirit gum comes spirit gum remover, because spirit gum is very, 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 very sticky and very, very, very hard to get off. So you have your spirit gum remover to remove your spirit gum. So we just have a couple more things in our kit. This stuff is really fun. It is called Snow White Hair Color. And what we can do is we can take this and we can put it in our hair and it will age us. It will make our hair look gray or white if we really get some in there. We have a little sponge, little, little sponge, and we use this sponge um, with our bruise wheel to apply like a scrape. We can scrape our skin with this with the bruise wheel color, and it looks like road rash or something. We can also use this guy to put the Snow White into our hair. Okay? Um, the 
last thing that we have in our kits is we have blood. We have some fake blood. I don't like to use fake blood very much because um, I have not had success with it applying it on myself. I wouldn't apply it like that, obviously, but um, I prefer to use uh, rouge and different colors um, from our color wheel to make uh, to make us look like we've we have a scab or we've just bled. Uh, this is in your kit, so feel free to play with it. Okay, so that's everything that we have in the makeup kit. Um, that's everything that's being provided for you in the class. I'm just going to clear myself a little space here. Oh, I lied. We have one other thing. And it's an important thing, so we'll take a minute to see it. We have translucent face powder. And what this face powder does is you put it on absolutely last, and you what you do is it comes with a little brush, or I'm sorry, a little pad and you dump some onto the pad, then you dab the pad all over your face, and then you take a little Kleenex or something from the Kleenex boxes that we have by the sink, and you wet the Kleenex, and then you dab the water really lightly all across your face with the finishing powder already on your face, and then you let it dry, and that seals in the makeup, so that when you're on stage and you're running around and you're in a big music number, or you're having a fight scene or something like that, um, it won't run as easily, okay? So that's everything that's in your makeup kit now, I promise. If anyone finds something that's in their makeup kit that I didn't mention, extra credit. But there isn't anything, but good luck. So now we're gonna move on to the final little part of this video. And that is the things that you will need to bring or purchase uh, for class that are not in your kits. So, number one most important thing, baby wipes. You might ask, why baby wipes? Sorry if that was loud. You might ask, why baby wipes? Well, baby wipes, little known fact, easiest way to get off the thicker, heavier stage makeup. You can take a baby wipe and you can get off just about anything in that kit with the exception of spirit gum. And then when you're done with that, you when you're done with the baby wipes, you can wash your face again um, and you'll be completely clean, clear, no more makeup. So baby wipes, baby wipes. I have pampers. You don't have to get pampers. Baby wipes. While we're talking about clean, if you'll remember, I said every day before you come to class, you need to wash your face. And then after you wash your face, you need to do two things. Do you remember what those are? I'm going to assume you said the two things. Ta-da! They don't have to be these brands, but they do need to be these things. Number one is an astringent. I have Clean and Clear. It was just the cheapest at the store. It doesn't have to be fancy. Um, and what an astringent does is it, you wipe your face with the astringent after your face is clean, it's not a cleanser, and what it does is it closes the pores on your face so that when you put on makeup, the makeup doesn't get into your pores. This is really important um, with theater makeup because it's so much thicker. Um, I had a friend once who was playing the genie from Aladdin, and she had a blue foundation that she put on. And one day she forgot to use her astringent and her moisturizer, which we're talking about next. And when she took off her makeup with her baby wipes, her skin was blue because the makeup had gotten into the pores. And it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, like she didn't have a horrible breakout moment, but her skin was blue for like, a day. So, I don't want you guys to be walking around campus with blue skin. Unless you want to. The next thing that you need is you need a 
moisturizer for your face, a lotion. It needs to, the only thing that I say um, it should be specifically is it needs to be um, a face specific lotion. So if you go to the store you'll find all sorts of lotions, body lotions, blah 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 blah. It needs to be a face lotion. Face lotions are especially formulated to not break out your skin as much. And Neutrogena, for example, the one that I have, um, well, you can't read the little, the little label, I suppose, the little label, but it is a combination skin, um, because I am a combination skin, and a lot of times you'll be able to pick what type of skin you have, um, and it should be fairly obvious to you. Usually it's like oily or common, you, if you have any questions, come see me in class. I'll tell you what you have. So the next thing that you need to get is mascara. I just got a cheap mascara. Remember, ladies, you can bring whatever mascara you wear on a regular basis or not. Um, you might have to purchase some yourself too. Gentlemen, cheap mascara for the stage. We are not out to impress anyone. Um, we are just there to redefine our lashes because from 30 feet away, with lots of light, they're hard to see, and you need to see them, or you look like you had a barbecue accident, okay? So, cheap mascara, any kind of mascara, cheap mascara. There are three more things that you need to, four more things, excuse me, that you need to get. Um, one of them is more essential for some people than others. You can skip this if you want. This is just a hairband. Um, I use it when my hair is a little bit longer, but it just gives you some extra clear space to work. Um, ladies, if you have longer hair, you might need more than one. Gentlemen, if you are bald or if you don't have long hair, um, if your hair is a little bit shorter than mine, you might not need one. So this is optional. You need to bring a towel to class. Um, a little hand towel is all you need. Um, and you need this to dry your face off, um, to clean up any messes that you might make with your makeup. Um, we have a washer and dryer at the lab. Uh, I showed it to you guys. Um, after every class, I wash them and dry them and have them ready for you at your next class so you don't have to worry about germs and things like that. But you do need to bring one so that you have it. You may not use it often, but you need to have it. You need a mirror. Ooh, a mirror. What's really important about bringing a mirror is that uh, we have the mirrors in class that you'll be using, so you'll be able to see yourself like this, like I can see myself right now on the screen, but what you'll need to be able to do sometimes is come up to that mirror and get a profile. Okay? So, mirror. You need to have one. doesn't have to be big. It can be no bigger than mine, I'd say. Uh, but not, like, super tiny. needs to needs to have some. You need to have something. And the last thing that you need to bring, um, and this is customizable, you by no means need to bring the one that I have, is something to do your hair. Okay? Um, so, again, welcome to class. Uh, thank you for coming to class on the first day so that you heard about this video and were able to get it. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful break. And I'll see you at our next class meeting. Bye.